right, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to start with a uh, brief opening statement from Coach. After that, and if you normally come around for questions, just raise your hand. Cool. Appreciate it. Um, get an opportunity this week to go against uh, Stanford, who I think is a prestigious university. You know, it's a great school organization. I've been watching them for a long time, so it's extremely um, honored to be able to play against those guys. I think uh, Coach Taylor is a good coach. Um, he's coached all over. If you go back and just check his resume and all from high school to college, I thought he was a really good quarterback as a player. When I went back and just researched, fourth round pick, 1990. 85th pick overall, so I mean we're going against a guy that's a real football guy, uh, does a good job with their offense, just calling it that he did a really good job at Sacramento, and you can see that it's starting. Those guys are buying into what it is that he does. Uh, Bobby April, the uh, DC, I think is intelligent, gives you a lot of different problems with him being a four down, three down, does a lot of things that switch around, and now uh, their special teams coordinator. Bob Gregory, I think he does a really good job. You know, also just from watching the special teams is important. Uh, quarterback Ashton, um, I like him. I think he's super athletic. He's a dual threat. He can run and he can throw. I think they uh, they do a really good job at uh, wide receiver. The receiver coach does a good job. But uh, with Alec, Ismail, Tiger, uh, I really like this kid Ruben. I've been watching a lot. I had to go back and study number zero. He's a good football player. Uh, of course, Ford, you know the running back. He's from New Jersey, so. He's always been a good player. And then Cedric Irvin, I just remember him from the recruiting trail of being a really good player down in Florida. So having the opportunity to face that offense and then defensively, uh, uh, Bernadette, Bernadelle, the linebacker, I think it's, yeah, it's Bernadelle. I know he leads the team in tackles and does a really good job. And then Tristan, I think they got a, both of those backers are good. Tristan's also another good player. Colin Wright, the uh, corner number six, is really good. And then uh, four, I think, is a cover guy. Like he can really cover. You know, seeing able to watch the secondary too. So those guys, I think they do a good job. I think uh, you can see that he's putting his footprint on the program and just all the stuff that he's done in the past at Sacramento. And then just seeing them grow from last year, watching a lot of the games last year and seeing how close they were to so many games and what they do. And um, he has a team that I think will fight. You know, and it's the first thing that goes back to just them being up, being down against uh, Colorado last year and just being able to fight back, it shows you the toughness and just who he is as a football coach and who they're going to be as a program. So I'm honored to go against them and uh, can't wait till Friday night. We'll start in the front. We'll go right across with Emily, then Dan, then Mark. Hey, Fran, good to see you. You're awesome. Uh, coming out of the bye week, just looking for updates on Justice Ross Simmons and Greg Delane and their health status right now. Yeah, those guys are practicing, so you know you should be able to see them. Hopefully, they be able to like you know crack. You don't just just because you come back doesn't mean you have to be like have to play. You know you have to compete now and be able to beat some of the other guys out because everybody's doing a good job. But I'm happy Justice is back and um, Greg's gonna be able to play out a cast on his hand like that. So Greg will be fine also. Will Greg still have the cast on his hand and play with yeah. that? Or? Okay. Yeah, yeah, he'll still have it. Fran, you had the opportunity in the bye week to be around your family, get to see your son. Just what you can say about how that kind of decompressed and that opportunity for you to be around the main thing with your family and then how the team, secondly, how they kind of dealt with the bye week and how you wanted them to handle this time away from football playing-wise. Well, I, I mean, we're still around each other every day. Football wise, you know, we um every single day except for Friday. So it was like, okay, take a, a breathe, go out and take a, a breath of fresh air. Uh, you've seen guys doing different things. We community service Thursday. Um, it was amazing being able to go out on the road and recruit this uh, past weekend on Friday and then Saturday. You know, it was my first time getting an opportunity to go and tailgate at a game, uh, watch my son play. Um, it was just, it was a lot of mixed emotions. It was, it was pretty cool though. I was happy to see us all there together, to be able to see him, to mess with him after the game and go out to eat like a, a normal parent gets to do all the time. I got a chance to be at a football game and just be stress free. You know what I mean? It was just there watching him, but back in my mind, I'm constantly thinking about, you know, all the stuff that we have to do and then watching them play and steady writing notes down of, okay, we need to handle this, we need to do that. There's certain things that you've seen from just watching a football game, but I was just so um, happy to see him. He had a pretty good football game. I like what um, their, the staff is doing there, um, how they're developing Franny. Uh, they're just doing a good job overall, just his conversations changing and everything you will want as a parent from a, co a coaching staff, I think uh, you know they're doing a real good job there. Hi, Coach, how you doing? Excuse my voice. <laughs> um, yeah. I know it's very early, 
But are you surprised about the impact that Kyle's leadership and his play has had on the program in just two games? And personally speaking, how gratified are you to see him succeed? No, so, I'm not uh, surprised. I'm um, excited, happy. It's where we want it to be. And uh, I think he can get better at a lot of things when it comes to just being a leader. There's a lot of things that he's still working on and working towards, and we all are. So we're constantly just, you know, we're constantly grow trying to evolve on a regular basis. So, I mean, but I'm very thankful of course, uh, the team's thankful to have him as our quarterback. Um, I think he's thankful and very thankful and happy to be here. So there's a lot of gratitude from all ends when it comes to you know him being our quarterback and this being a school for him. And I think it's a great place. He's here getting a, a tremendous education. You know, so there's a lot that goes hand in hand. What, Chris? Fran, sticking with Kyle a little bit. Um, everything that you've sort of done and said since you've gotten here would, would breathe confidence, I think, into a quarterback. Um, did you feel like he needed any of that coming off like a rare career hiccup for him? I don't know. I really can't speak on the past place he's been. I'm just speaking on me and his relationship, you know, and I think that um, we're constantly growing a good relationship. Um, you know, he's like a little brother to me, you know, and I care about him. I just... We're just growing a good, genuine relationship. You know, football is one piece that we have to handle, but then outside of that, I think we have something where it's as though it'll last for the rest of our lives. You know, and I've always been like that once I recruited kids. Um, I coach PJ Walker, who still have an opportunity of still playing now, and me and him still text all the time. I call him. I still call Miss Walker, who's his mom. So I think it's just something that happens when you're recruiting certain guys and then you grow that relationship and, you know, it's genuine. It's not like being fake or anything like that. So um, I, I can't really speak on past. I mean, he did a good job. They won a lot of games. They did well there. So, you know, they, he was developed, you know, he was developed. So happy that we have him here now, though. Christian over Justin. Coach, what are some of the qualities and attributes that you saw in Coach Nixon when you guys were at Baylor that have shown up and given him success here at Syracuse as the offensive coordinator? We score points. I mean, we tend to have more points than the other team. So, you know, just the points. Uh, but he's just consistent. He's competitive. We compete in practice. I talk a lot of trash at practice and stuff like that. So him being able to still come back and, you know, talk some stuff back and just have fun. And he loves to compete. Like, he wants to be the best. You know, that's his main thing. It's like uh, he want to be the best. He want to show who he is and what he's about. And um, I just think he's good at everything he does. You know, if you go look him up as a player. In his high school, he was ranked pretty high. When he went to college, he did a good job. You know, him being a – special teams coordinator in the NFL, him being an offensive coordinator in the NFL, just a running back coach. Everything he does, he does at a high level. So, I mean, I'm just, I just wanted to be around high level, high quality, high character guys, and I think he's one of them. And our program benefits from having him here. Coach, you mentioned, you know, you praised Stanford's wide receiver group. What have you seen so far from your defensive backs to, you know, contain them this weekend, especially Alec Aomander, number 13? No, oh, we're just going to try to go out and play the defense that Coach uh, Robinson calls and just try to hope that we get the right fits, the right time for the right things to be able to um, just knock them off track a little bit. Those dudes are good football players. Um, I think it'll just be – it's going to be competitive, you know, excited that we get to go against them. I mean, it, I think Ellick is, like, legit, you know what I mean? This kid can run, he can play, 84 is good, but I like Ruben also. I mean, they got 24 who's the plays kick returner, pump returner. Um, Double move guy, like he does a lot of things. So they um, they do a good job. Like I like them. You know, I like who they are. I like their quarterback too. I like what they do. You know, I think they do a good job. Their offensive uh, scheme is good. You know, they do a real good job. They give you a lot of problems because this kid can run so well at quarterback that he and those guys know how to scramble. They, when he scrambles, they know how to get open and find him. You can tell they do that a lot. So it's a pretty cool deal. Excited about. Them. Hey, Coach, I just want to know what you thought about having a bye week this early in the season and how you keep everybody mentally locked in, keep the energy high with kind of an extended break in between the last game and the upcoming one. We just focused on now. It's just a daily, the process, you know, the time management sheets, same the things that you usually do, whether you're playing someone or not, you still have to live that day. You still have to be a man and follow through with everything that you're supposed to follow through to. So uh, we just kind of focused on that, you know, now we like ready for, you know, ready to play. Just but, but like focused on the day, you know, locked in on Monday, being where we are right now, being able to do that, and uh, just keeping the guys grounded and making sure they understand that no one cares about what happened before. 
Like they all will change up so fast. So it's about what have you done for me lately? And I mean like the last 10 minutes, not like last week's game or anything like that. Don't nobody care about that no more. We focused on now and we're moving along. So that way we can continue to try and do what our mission is and be able to accomplish that. Coach, um, after the Georgia Tech game, we saw you have the moment with the fans and you talked about just how important having those college students are to this program. Now coming off a of bye week, looking at a Friday night game, how important is it you know, to get all those fans back after the bye week to pack the dome and maybe people that you know, would be doing maybe something else on a Friday night? Well, me and the students got a good relationships, so they're going to be here. So, like, I, me and the students, like, we cool. They know that. They know I care for them. They care, they care for me. Um, if there's anything I could ever do for them, you know what I mean, help them, anything of that nature, I'm 100% all in. So, when it comes to the students, I know where they're going to be at Friday night. So, that's not even, a, like, a question. And I know they'll be loud. So, like, they'll have a lot of fun. And, um fans, I think fans will continue to come as needed, you know. I mean, with, with football, like, you got to – you got to show them some consistency, you know, and I don't think we've been consistent enough for them to just say, oh, it has to be packed this way. We haven't been consistent enough. We, got, we have a long way to go for people to feel that I need to be there. I have to be there, you know. So right now we're not – we have to be – we have to work our butts off to become the main event. So there might be other things in town that may be more important at the moment. And we just got to continue to earn everybody's trust and for them to want to be there and have to be there. But when it comes to the students, I know they'll be here. Hey, Coach. Uh, what have you seen from Deuce Chestnut kind of coming over from LSU after being here in the past? What has he kind of brought to your program this season? Uh, he's just intelligent. We got to move a corner to free safety. I think he can cover a little bit better in the, in, as a safety. Most safeties can't cover as well as he does. Um, he understands football. I mean, he's been a good football player since he was a little kid. I've been watching Deuce play since he was, I think, seven. So just seeing him constantly develop and go through things. And I think um, him going to LSU was um, something that he needed to mature in his life. You know, there was things that he went through. He, went, he faced some adversity, and he was able to face it head on. And we were still able to continue to build our relationship as he was facing those situations um, because me and his father and all of us being so close growing up. Um, so it's um, I'm just honored that uh, he's back here, happy that he's here, and happy that he's continuously growing and maturing as a young man and as a leader on our team. He'll actually be a captain this week for the game. He's one of the game captains, him and Trevor and uh, John Ray Reed and Derek McDonald. So those guys will all be there together. Um, he's been doing a great job, man. Really good job. Could you speak on uh, the growth you've seen from Trevor Pena through the first two games of the season, how he's settled into a high workload role this year? Trevor Pena? Yes, sir. How about you speak on it? I thought he's done great. Me too. <laughs> he did a good job. I mean, he barely got to play last year, but he's uh, he's been locked in on just all the things, like I said before, that are needed for him to become the young man that he wants to become off the field. And then I think the on the field just becomes second nature. But he's always gonna been a good football player. Now he's healthy. You know, it's nothing opposite. He's just, I think he's healthy now. I think he's uh, truly following his faith. Um, I think he's uh, following the schedule that he writes out for himself weekly so that way he can be successful. And when there's a little nick or a nag on his body, he's in the training room taking care of it. I think Brandon does an amazing job, and those guys are forming a real good relationship with him, Reggie, and uh, Gretchen. So our uh, training staff's done a good job of just keeping guys a little more healthier than they've been in the past. Uh, first of all, happy Monday. Good to see you. Um, you considering the reality that is college football now, post-conference realignment, is it a little odd to think about you're playing a team from California and then you're going to go to California in a couple weeks or so? Man, this is my first time coaching. I don't, even, I don't care who we play. Like, it's whatever. I mean, the schedule is already done. So, like, it's just who we have to go and play. Um, I'm happy to get to play schools from California because at some point there's going to be some players on our football team just as the quarterback from there, number eight, Samson played here before, you know, from out West Coast. So, I mean, it gives you an opportunity to go and recruit some guys and for them to be comfortable knowing that they'll get an opportunity to travel back home twice a year. So I think it helps. Um, you got Cal and then you'll have Stanford all the time who should be on the schedule. So, I mean, it's not I'm happy to be able to go play them. I'm happy to go out to California. I'm happy that Stanford gets to come here, you know, battle the block S, I guess, you know. See how it goes. Uh, 
Friend, what has impressed you most about your O-line's performance through these first few weeks? Uh, keeping Kyle healthy. Uh, that's really all I care about. Making sure Kyle stays healthy. Making sure that they make the hole big enough for LaQuint to be able to get through those holes. So, you know, Kyle and LaQuint being healthy mean a lot. And those guys communicating and spending time with each other. What's most impressed me, though, honestly, is their relationship. How they've grown. How they are helping each other. You know, uh, we've grown a little bit of depth when it comes to the O-line now. Um, just the fact that Enrique Cruz is a grown man, you know, doing everything he can. And you watch him push and be able to tell, you know, Savion, Savion Washington and being able to tell Weatherspoon, hey, I see this and I see that. Like those guys being able to do that. Joe Cruz, who can play here, Trey Mack. So there's so many guys that, I mean, I know we got those guys that are on the field, but when you look at a Trey Mack, who's doing an amazing job, Joe Cruz, who's doing an amazing job, like all of these guys, in my opinion, that are just class A kids, you know, and doing a great job academically. They're doing a good job on the football field and just pushing and waiting their turn and excited about the guys in front of them. I think the way they've formed a bond as a group, I mean, it's pretty special, you know, it's really special. David Woolabaz, a guy in that room that yep. I know was coming back from an injury and on like a rep count, I guess. Where has he been at? Because we haven't really seen him. He's good. We just had a complete uh, conversation with him yesterday about making sure he's pushing back to where he needs to be. You know, it was myself, athletic trainer, his O-line coach, his father and mom, all of us were on. It was like, okay, we're ready to push you now. You know, because this kid was a good player. This kid was starting before he got injured. And um, we're just happy that we got that debt back. So, like, it's – Kids like that, we literally just had that conversation with him yesterday about being able to go push and, you know, just become a little bit uncomfortable going through it right now. Um, but he's a good football player. Um, his dad played in the NFL for a long time, played here. And I think the kid will follow his father. I think the same things will happen for him. But um, he's a real good kid. So, and we're just happy about the O-line period, you know. Hopefully those guys can stay healthy. Frank, just uh, you mentioned LaQuinn Allen, him as well as Will Nixon, Yasin Willis, and Malachi James. Just through these first couple games, I, I know that you relied a lot on McCord's arm and seen the success that he's had over 350 yards in both games and four passing touchdowns. But that balance attack that you're looking at, just what you can say about the backfield as we step into this Friday night game. I felt like they've been doing everything they're supposed to. I felt like LaQuinn has been the biggest supporter of everyone due to the fact of last year he got the ball so much, done so many things, done so much. And he's just so open and wants to see everyone do well. Um, I think that we've just been doing what the defense has been allowing us to do. Um, I still don't think you've seen the best of our running backs yet. You know, there's a lot that you'll see from LaQuint coming up soon. Uh, not sure of when, but just depends on what we try to do is just take what they give you, you know. and. and uh, Kyle's pretty good, so things have opened up for Kyle. But when LaQuint runs the ball, I mean, you see, when it was time for us to win that, uh, the game before, when we had a chance to play, I hate to bring up another game, but we went and put the ball in LaQuint's hands because he's the leader of the football team, as I told you all before. But um, I'm just, I think we got a real good backfield set, you know, and I think you'll get a chance to see those guys and watch a little bit of the big, the big young fella this weekend also. So try to get him to get some, some run a little bit. We'll see how it goes with all those guys. Coach, Coach, one more Kyle question. Uh, I'd like to go back to what you said after the Georgia Tech game about Kyle running for the 16, 15 yards on third and three. You said that play was really important to the program. Can you expand on what you meant by that, why, how that one play is so important to the program, and what did that play say about him also? Well, every day in practice, I'm always like screaming at him about I want him to run telling them to pull certain things and do it. I want them to run. I want them to run. I want to see you run for a long touchdown. So when he took off the run, it was more so like a, yeah, shut up, coach. You know, all the players and everybody was excited about, yeah, he ran. It was good. And um, he was mad that he stepped out. You know, he wanted to keep going. So it was a good deal just to see him go and run. And just, it was good for everyone to see it because I'm always saying something. If you've ever been to practice, you know that I never shut up. So being able to just shut me up for one moment was probably a good thing for all of the kids to say that, you know. Fran, I wanted to go back to what you said after Georgia Tech about your defensive coaches. They kind of got in a room all week and had to make a lot of adjustments going into that game. What impressed you the most about how they essentially went back to the drawing board and, and put together a plan for that game? 
Well, I just, they just fo focus. I think they're relentless. You know, I think they live out our core values, that detail, they're accountable. Uh, they're relentless and tough uh, in all aspects of their lives. And uh, I think they did that, that game, and they just showed, look, okay, let's, every game's different, you know. You won't do the same thing every game. And all we just, we just want to be able to, you know, win the, that game that we're in, you know, but really win that day. And you've seen them just daily getting better and better and understanding and knowing and being able to block out all the noise and just focus on us and just focus on the kids, giving them the best opportunity to go out and uh, being able to compete at their best without having to think, slowing them down. I thought that um, they allowed our players to play fast and uh, they, they had no egos. Coach E has no ego at all. And uh, his coaching staff on the defense, they all just came together and they did a really good job. Thank you very much, Coach. Thanks, man. Appreciate you.